All right, let's settle the debate. Princeton versus Harvard architecture. What are they and which one is better? Imagine this, you are at a fast food restaurant and there is a single counter where you place your order, also you pick up your food. The situation here is similar to this architecture which was proposed by Johann von Neumann and since he worked at Princeton, that's why this architecture is also called Princeton architecture. It uses a single bus and a memory to handle both instructions, that is your order, and the data, that is your food. Simple, but it means you might need to wait longer during busy hours because everything goes through that single counter, causing the infamous von Neumann bottleneck. Now imagine two counters instead of one, one for placing your orders and another one for picking up food. This architecture here follows similar concept. As you can notice, it uses separate memories and buses for handling instructions and data. It allows things to move faster because both instructions and data can be accessed simultaneously. It is called Harvard architecture because it was developed by the group of researchers working on the Harvard Mark I computer during World War II. Now there is a catch. Harvard architecture is more expensive and complex to design because of its dual system. Princeton on the other hand is simpler and more cost effective but then again it suffers from von Neumann bottleneck. So which one is better? Well, it depends. Princeton architecture is great for general purpose computers, whereas Harvard architecture dominates in embedded systems and microcontrollers. So now you know the difference. Do you know there is another architecture which combines the best of both? That is called modified Harvard architecture. Want to learn about that? Follow our COA course at Nesway Academy.